Hello dear students, today I am going to deliver a lecture on the topic entitled as Circosupora, Important Features and Life History. Objectives of this lecture are as follows, to point out morphoanatomical features of Circosupora, to make students aware about the economic importance of Circosupora, to study the life cycle of Circosupora. Circosupora was established by Fresinus in 1863. It is a large genus of more than 3,800 species. The genus was first monographed by Chop in 1953. Circosupora species are saprophytic as well as parasitic. Most of the species are plant parasites causing leaf support diseases. Circosupora mycelium is branched, intercellular, with hostoria entering the cells. Only asexual reproduction has been reported in this fungal group, and the conidia are the chief means of reproduction. Conidia are produced on conidiophores acrogenously. They germinate to form new mycelium. Fungi imperfecti which form spores directly on the hypha or on the sporophores which may be free or aggregated but never in pycnidia or acervuli are placed in the class hyphomycetes. Circospora also belongs to hyphomycetes. Species of Circospora are economically very important because most of them act as plant parasites. The name Circosupora is derived from a combination of Greek words kirkok meaning tail and suporos meaning seed, thereby meaning the filiform conidia of the fungus. The telomorph citate is Mycosuperella johnson, which is a genus that has been linked with at least 30 different coelomycetes or hypomycetes anomorph genera. Cross and Brand in 2003 re-examined the Circosupora and presented a compilation of more than 3,000 names published in the genus Circosupora. They separated the Circosuporaid genera mainly based on a combination of characters, namely structure of conidiogenous loci or cigars and hilli, the presence and absence of pigmentation in conidiophores and conidia. Brown in 1993 also established generic separation of Circosupora on diverse criteria including ontogeny, pigmentation and ornamentation of conidia, conidiophores and conidiometa. The character of conidial cigars, stressed by digiton, is an unambiguous taxonomic criteria. And has also been adopted by other mycologists in the classification of Circosupora and allied genera. Circosupora species are commonly associated with leaf supports, but they can also cause necrotic lesions in flowers, fruits, bracts, seeds, and pedicels. In addition, several species of this genus are also known to be hyperparasites of other plant pathogenic fungi and are employed as biocontrol agents of weeds. Now, general symptoms and damage of Circosupora on different hosts. Symptoms caused by Circosupora species are variable. Leaf supports may or may not be present. Leaf supports range from a faint discoloration on both the surfaces of leaf to well-defined and conspicuous leaf supports with colored borders. Often, a few fruit bodies are visible on the lower leaf surface when no leaf supports are visible. When the disease reaches a certain stage, the leaf may curl, dry and often droop from the plant. Many species of Circosupora also affect the blossoms fruits, succulent petioles, 
and young sitam. Supports may turn the entire leaf yellow or brown, after which it shrivels and dies. Species of Cercospora are economically very important because most of them act as plant parasites. Some common species are Cercospora calotropis on Calotropis procera, Cercospora hibiscus on Lady's finger, Cercospora rosicola on rose, Cercospora persinata and Cercospora archidicoli on groundnut and Cercospora beaticola on sugar beet. Tika disease of groundnut is widespread in India and is caused by Cercospora persinata and Cercospora archidicoli. When this disease is in serious form, the last crop yield ranges from 22% to 70 percent. Carrot leaf blight is caused by Cercospora caroti. Now, vegetative structure of Cercospora. The mycelium of Cercospora spongy is branched and septate. When the mycelium is grown in culture, it is highlined initially and turns greenish brown at maturity. They can live as parasites or saprophytes. When the fungus infects the host, the hypha are cylindrical and branched. When they grow intercellularly, they form lobed hosteria. In case of Cercospora archidicoli, the mycelium is intracellular as well as intercellular and lacks hostorium. In case of Cercospora persinata, Mycelium is totally internal and intercellular, which sends branched hostoria into palisade and mesophyll cells. Now, dear students, I will tell you about reproduction of Cercospora. Before the mycelium switches over to reproductive phase, the hyphae accumulates at some places and becomes compacted to form a brown to black globular mass of hypha called citroma. From the citroma arise conidiophores. Conidiophores may be colorless, variously pigmented and pigmentation is an important taxonomic feature. Conidiophores may be formed singly or arise from hypha as lateral branchlets or they are arranged in loose or dense fascicles. Thus, Vegetative mycelium gives rise to erect conidiophores which bear a single conidium at its tip or apex. Cercospora reproduces only asexually by conidia. In Cercosuporoid fungi, conidiogenesis is blastic, determinate and show sympodial proliferation. Conidia may be single or they may be held in chains. Cercospora is characterized by long, cylindrical, obclavate, multiceptate, haline or brownish conidia. They are ash grey to light brown in color. Conidia have constant length breadth ratio of 1 is to 10 to 1 is to 150. The first formed conidium is pushed to one side and a new conidium is formed at the apex. Conidia are blown by wind or raindrops. As the conidium separates from the conidiophore, it leaves a scar on the conidiophore. On germination, a conidium forms one or more germ tubes, which give rise to a new mycelium. Thus, life cycle is completed. Sexual methods are either absent or not reported yet. Perfect stage of some fungi are known in the genus Mycosuperilla. Two anonymous groups of Cercospora are found to exist, that is those with colored conidia and those with haline conidia. 
द कॉनिडिया ऑफ सर्कोसुपोरा स्पीशीज आर इधर स्ट्रेट और कर्वड दे कैन बी एसिक्यूलर फिलिफॉर्म ओबकुलेट और मे हैव ए कम्बिनेशन ऑफ शेप्स द कॉनिडिया ऑफ सर्कोसुपोरा आर कैरेक्टराइज बाय हेलाइन और पेल ऑलविशस पिगमेंटेशन एंड आर यू सेप्टेट दैट इज सेप्ट और फॉर्मड बाय ऑल एग्जिस्टिंग वॉल लेयर्स नाउ सम मेजर डिजीजेज काज बाय सर्कोसुपोरा फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल कैरट लीव ब्लाइट काजिटिव ऑर्गेनिज्म ऑफ दिस डिजीज इज सर्कोसुपोरा कैरोटी सिम्टम्स सर्कोसुपोरा लीव ब्लाइट शोज लीव सुपार्टस विच बिगिन अलॉन्ग द मार्जिन ऑफ द लीव एंड रिजल्ट इन लीव कर्ल सुपार्टस इन साइड द लीव एजिज आर सुमाल सर्क्यूलर एंड टैन और ग्रे टू ब्राउन विद ए डेड सेंटर With the increase in number and size of lesions, the entire leaflet withers and dies. This reduces photosynthesis. The pathogen also produces lesions on the petioles and stems, characterized by dark brown borders and tan to grey centers. The lesions may merge and girdle the stem, causing leaves to die. Damage occurs to host because the pathogen. causes severe blight on the leaves and petioles now disease cycle of this pathogen the pathogen survives in the seed and on diseased crop drips in the soil the fungal pathogen produces spores that become airborne and are spread predominantly by wind moisture is essential for infection because Spores require surface moisture and warm temperatures to germinate. Now, tika disease of ground nut. This is also a serious disease. Causative organism of this disease is Cercospora archidicoli and Cercospora persinatum. Early and late leaf spots are the most common. and serious diseases of groundnut together they can cause losses up to 50% in pod yield the disease is also known by different names microsphyrella leaf spots cercospora leaf spots brown leaf spot peanut cercosporosis and tika disease of groundnut leaf spots damage the plant by reducing the available photosynthetic area by lesion formation and by stimulating leaflet abscission now symptoms of this disease early leaf spot is caused by cercospora archidicoli leaf spots first appear on the upper surface of lower leaves as faint brown to black pinpoint dots as the dots enlarge to become brown to dark brown circular spots a yellow halo generally develops as a border around each spot this disease is frequently seen early in the growing season spots with an irregular shape can also develop on leaf petioles and plant stem it can lead to defoliation and reduce yield if not controlled by fungicide sprays leaves that fall on the soil surface may trigger epidemics of certain soil borne diseases such as southern stem rot now late leaf spot this is caused by cercospora persinata like early leaf spot this disease can also cause defoliation reduced yield and increased incidence of certain soil borne diseases such as southern stem rot as the name implies late leaf spot is most prevalent during the late part of the growing season lesions caused by cercospora persinatum are usually smaller commonly they show no yellow halo they are more nearly circular and darker in color than those of cercospora archidicoli now disease cycle of this pathogen the two pathogens 
grow differently in the host in case of cercospora archidicoli the mycelium is intracellular as well as intercellular and lacks haustorium in case of cercospora persinata mycelium is totally internal and intercellular we send this branched haustoria into palisade and mesophyll cells in case of cercospora archidicoli conidiophores are always just brown simple geniculate continuous or septate conidia are mostly confined to the upper leaf surface they are sparsely placed hyaline or pale yellow obclavate septate with round to distinctly truncate base and subacute tips conidia are 30 to 108 microns long and 6 to 8 microns broad they are formed by abstraction at the tips of conidiophores in case of cercospora persinata conidia are restricted to the lower surface and cushions of conidiophores are formed in concentric circles substomatal cavities are filled by hyphal aggregation to form stromata from the stromata arise conidiophores which rupture the epidermis conidiophores are hyaline to dark brown septate or not septate sometimes branched citrate or flexus and show distinct geniculate that is knee like bends they are 20 to 30 microns in diameter these form single conidia acrogenously conidia are obclavate or cylindrical light colored their length is 18 to 60 microns while breadth is 6 to 11 microns early and late leaf support pathogens are soil borne infection by cercospora archidicoli normally precedes that of cercospora persinata but both diseases may appear within 3 to 5 weeks after growing season conidia are produced directly from the mycelium in crop debris in the soil following early rains and when deposited on the leaves of young groundnut plants by rain splash and wind they initiate the disease cycle both fungi are capable of producing tremendous number of spores on infected plant parts spore production is favorable by high humidity visible spores develop 10 to 14 days after infection new spores are produced in spores on infected leaves these spores will subsequently infect plants and produce secondary infections on germination a conidium forms one or more germ tubes which give rise to new mycelium thus life cycle is completed conidia can also perinate in soil or shells of fruits for some time thus they act as main inoculum and help in the perpetuation of the disease infection of new host occurs by direct penetration through stomata of upper epidermis leaf support can increase rapidly under favorable conditions as several secondary cycles may occur per season abundant peanut residue in the fields where peanuts are cropped continuously often results in early and rapid development of leaf support now gray leaf support disease of corn gray leaf support disease of corn is caused by fungus cercospora zeamedes this disease occurs throughout the maize growing regions of the world where the growing season is characterized by high humidity and temperature between 22 and 30 degrees overcast cloudy days favor this disease now symptoms of this disease mature foliar lesions are rectangular gray to tan in color long and run parallel to the leaf veins under severe disease lesions may coalesce and blight the entire leaf initially tan colored lesions are confined to leaf margins as the fungi are not able to penetrate sclerenchyma tissue in the leaf veins early symptoms of infection include pinpoint lesions surrounded by yellow halos which elongate later and assume rectangular shape lodging may occur if stalks are also affected 
when disease increase entire leaves can be blighted and lesions can develop on comb sheaths also severe blighting not only causes premature death of leaves but also reduces the amount of photosynthate that is sugars required for air fill grains are not properly filled by sugars because photosynthetic sugar producing leaves are damaged lodging is also major cause of disease now disease cycle of this pathogen cercospora zoomadis like many other foliar fungal pathogens of corn is a poor competitor in the soil and can survive only as long as infested corn debris is present the fungi are host specific and overwinters as mycelium and stromata in infected maize plant debris left on the soil surface infested corn debris on the soil surface is the source of primary inoculum for the next corn crop the fungus colonizing this debris produces conidia as early as may in late spring in response to warm temperature and high humidity conidia begin to develop on residue these are blown by wind and alight on the lower leaves of the plant the first appearance of leaf support and it is continuous progress throughout the growing season are heavily dependent upon the weather conditions environmental conditions required for both types of leaf supports are warm temperature and long periods of high humidity or leaf wetness potential damage from leaf support is greater where levels of humidity and rainfall are high frequent irrigation with small amounts of water can also create prolonged periods of high humidity and leaf wetness favorable for the infection dear students this was all about the topic i wish you success in your future endeavors thanks a lot